Good morning. Good, good, good morning. Oh, do we have trouble? Trouble. trouble. Yeah, we got it. With a capital T and that rhymes with P and uh, that's an old musical or something. Yeah, what was that? Music man. Music man. We got Jesus, we've got Jesus, we've got Jesus, we've got Jesus. Do not fear, I am with you. I've been your friend in your weakness. I've held you and caused you to stand. And while your eyes scan in the darkness, I work my plan. And now your enemies flee from my righteous right hand. And all who rage now against you will all their anger dissolved into shame. And though you search for your enemies, they'll not be found. I will help you. I will stand by you. Do not fear. I am with you. I've been your friend. In your weakness, I've held you caused you to stand and while you eyes scan the darkness I work my plan and now your enemies flee from my righteous right hand and all who rage now against you will soon be disgraced all their anger dissolved in the shame Search for your enemies, they'll not be found. I will help you. I will stand by you. Do not fear, I am with you. I've been your friend in your weakness. I've held you and caused you to stand. I work my plan. Now your enemies flee from my righteous right. Now your enemies flee from my righteous right. Lord, as you spoke those words through Isaiah the prophet so long ago. And so often religious people thought those words were only for them. Certainly the Pharisees would have thought. And yet, Lord, as I sing that song, as I think those words in the light of your light, the light of the world, the one who stood in the temple treasury and stood with that woman, those who rage now against you, will soon be disgraced. All their anger dissolved into shame. Though you search for your enemies, they'll not be found. Where have they all gone? I don't condemn you either. I will help you. I will stand by you. Lord, your word, it's for anyone who wants to get well. Help us, Lord, to not just meet the darkness with more darkness, to fight the fire with more fires. Help us, Lord, to look to you. Lord, in your name I'm not afraid. You have been my hope. When fears were far beyond my understanding, I'm not alone. You have been my help when friends were far beyond my reach. So in your name I'll face the unknown hours before us. In your name I'll sing a song of victory. I'm not the same. 
in your name I'm not afraid. You have been my hope when fears were far beyond my understanding. And in your name I'm not alone. You have been my help when friends were far beyond my reach. In your name I'll face the unknown hours before me In your name I'll sing a song to everyone In your name I'll keep repeating what you told me In the end I'll not regret t-shirt or putting on the bumper sticker or saying in Jesus name over something that has nothing to do with your nature Lord we know to live in your name is to live in your word and what you told us and what you said teach us Lord teach us he hath shown me Oh, man, what is good and what the Lord requires of me, he has shown me. Oh, man, what is good and what the Lord requires of me, just to do justly. And to love mercy and to walk out with thy God just to do justly and to love mercy and to walk out with thy God. He has shown me. Once again, I pray for my friends, my family, for all those that uh, want to be with me today, at this time, looking to your word and, and asking you to tell us what it, what it means for our lives. Lord, I pray that we would all hear from you, that we would all be helped by you. I pray, your, Lord, that uh, we would receive the blessing that you would give and that we would be that blessing toward others to do justly, to love mercy, to walk humbly with you. Mm. Lord, you know our needs. 
you know what goes on deep inside each person that's with me now in spirit. And Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit would meet those needs more profound than money could provide, far deeper than, than even the best friend could go. Lord, we ask that you would go to those depths to let each of us know we're not alone, to give us a hope for a very bright future. It's in Jesus' name that we do hope. Amen. Okay. Put my baby to rest there. Take up my Bible. Here we are. Let's see. Uh, John chapter 5 is where we're studying. What did I just say? You can't tell me. I, I don't know what I said. John chapter 8. If I didn't... There's something in my brain that says... I said fine. And I don't know. I don't know. I just got to twist this thing. Not got to twist this thing. There. That thing. Okay. John chapter 8. <laughs> how, how blessed we are to be together. How, however together we happen to be. It's a, it's a blessing. God created us. God alone can hold us together. God alone can put us together. And uh, we may not be able to see each other like we'd like. But, but if we can learn to love each other. Just a little bit more. Then the church grows. And it grows. And it grows. A love for humanity. That's what the Son of Man came to show us and to teach us. And thank God we've got so many opportunities and challenges. Learning to, to love. Jesus said here in verse 12 of chapter 8, I am the light of the world. And he who believes in me shall not walk in the darkness, but shall have the light of life. You know, dark things happen every night. Dark things happen. But you don't have to walk in darkness, Jesus said. And that light of Jesus never, never, ever changes. But here on earth, the, the light does grow and expand and spread. It's like that river that Ezekiel saw flowing forth from the temple. It grew broader and deeper and went further. And that's just the nature of the river of life, the water of life. Same thing with the, the, the light of the world, the, the water for the world. It, it's Jesus, it's love. And it's something that flows forth and gets better and broader. And uh, those who just watch the banks and watch the lines often find they're stuck way back in history somewhere saying that's the way it's supposed to be. No, it's bigger, it's better, it overflows. It's not just for the Jews, it goes to the Samaritans. It's not just for the Samaritans, it's for the whole world. The promise, even in the Old Testament, the promise in uh, Habakkuk is that one day the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord even as the waters cover the sea, like completely, 100%. So that's good news. But, you know, it's not breaking news. You're, you're not going to catch those kind of hopeful thoughts in the breaking news, because breaking news is just the news about things that are breaking. But healing, it's also happening. And healing doesn't tend to get the headlines because uh, it's slow, it's subtle, but it's where we need to focus. It's what, it's what we're about. It's the thing, the healing, to look for, to focus on, to to grow in. That's what the light would teach us and, and show us. And, and walking in the light is, is walking with a friend. It's, it's walking by that river that gets broader and deeper. It's, it's walking with that light that goes forth into the world. Jesus is a healer. Jesus is a caretaker. As we're helping to heal others, as we're taking care of others, as we're being careful, not, not fearful, not afraid of stepping over the line, but careful, caring for others, We'll find that we're walking with Him, we're walking in the light. Perfect love casts out all fear. And like Psalm 23 says, He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. And that's how He restores my soul. The, the kingdom is within you. First and foremost, receiving the King and letting the kingdom grow within you. Restore, heal my soul, heal my heart. That's what it's all about. So Jesus, the light, the love that, that helps that to happen, 
And here in verse 26, where we left off last week, in 26, Jesus is talking to those who, who wanted to lay hold of him. They wanted to take him and break him and destroy his influence on the people because they saw it as dangerous. And he's talking to them, but they couldn't take him because his hour had not yet come. And it says there in verse 26, Jesus says, I have many things to speak and to judge concerning you. And of course, these are diagnoses, not condemnations. He didn't come to judge, but to save. He says, I've got a lot, of more, a lot more things to say about you, but he who sent me is true. And the things that I heard from him, these are the things that I speak to the world. Not, not just to you. I'll tell you some more things, some more warnings to help you get healed. But I'm speaking to the entire world. Again, that's where we left off. But it says there in verse 27, they didn't realize that he had been speaking to them about the Father. <laughs> A lot of things we still, we still don't realize. And Jesus therefore said, when you lift up the Son of Man, then you'll know that I am. And I do nothing on my own initiative, but I speak these things as the Father taught me. And he who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do the things that are pleasing to him. So Jesus says to these who, who wanted to lay hold of him and stop him and silence him, he says, one day you will know. You will know who I am. You will know that I am. That I am the expression of the Father. That, that I am in harmony with the Father. I am in complete concert with the Father. I'm not alone in any of this. There's, there's no discord. There's no disruption, disconnect, no division, no darkness at all. I am the Father. I am the light of the world. He's the Father of lights. All of that, he's saying that one day you will know. So, when? <laughs> when? When, when? When are people going to get it? it? It's offered now. Today's the day of opportunity, but... But when for these people, and, and how for these people? Jesus said, that's why I'm asking the questions that are wise, I wouldn't know. He answers the question, when and how? He says, <clears throat> when you lift up the Son of Man, then you'll know that I am. And all the other stuff that I just said, you'll, that he says there. He says, you'll, you'll know all of that when, when you lift up the Son of Man. And of course, you folks know it. It's not lift up in praise. We lift you up, we lift you up, and now we know. Lifting up the Son of Man is, is what Jesus said to Nicodemus. As, as the serpent was lifted up, as Moses lifted up that snake on a pole in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son. You, you know, it's that, it's that lifting up. The snake on the pole for the healing. To, to this day, of course, the, the emblem associated with healing is the the emblem of, of Asclepius. It's the, the pole with the snake. And, uh, you know, of course, the Greeks had their traditions, uh, very different from Moses, but it's, it's interesting. Same symbol, maybe, maybe a memory back in there somewhere. And when Jesus, in chapter 5, walked into that temple of Asclepius, a, a pagan temple, but he went in there, and then, of course, the Jews called it a house of mercy, Jesus showed true mercy and, and went to that fellow and said, do you, do you want to walk? Do you wish to be well? So the, this whole idea of, of lifting up the snake on the pole, it, it's a picture, of course, of, of the death of Jesus. Later on in chapter 12, Jesus says, if I, if, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men to myself. And then, just in case we would get it wrong again, John even tells us, that he was saying this to indicate the kind of death by which he was to die. So, his breaking is, is the means of our healing. These, these opponents of his, they wanted to take him and break him and stop his influence, but no, it, his hour had not yet come. And Jesus said, no one takes my life from me. No, instead, just like he would do with the bread, so with his body. He takes it, he breaks it, and then he feeds us. We, we, we feed upon that love because that's what it's all about. That's, this isn't magical or you've got to get the symbols just right. It's the ultimate symbol, the ultimate picture, the ultimate proof 
of God's love. It, it's all about the healing power of love. Now, no greater love does somebody have than they lay down their lives. <laughs> and when God himself becomes a man and lays down his life, no, no greater picture. But even when it's performed just a little bit here and there, it's, it's all the same in the sense that love is a tremendous healing power. Sacrificial love. Loving those that, that may not even like you, but loving nonetheless. It's the healing power of, of love. And of course, Jesus did it to the, to the ultimate. And, and we can learn to do it more and more every day, but it's, it's true. It's where the real power. And if you're willing to, to be healed, he was willing to provide the means. He was willing to endure the darkness. He who himself, who, he says, I'm the light of the world. He would go down into a darkness where he'd say, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I don't understand that. But, but he was willing to endure darkness and, and apparent disruption and disconnect. And it would look like he was left alone. And it, it would look like the Father wasn't with him at all. And, and all of that was, was real and, and horrible. But he was willing to go through all of that so, so that you and I could know that God loves us. He loves us. That much. That much. And so Jesus says to these who were, at this point, his opponents, totally in the dark, didn't want the light. He, he said, when you, when you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know. Now, nothing happened instantaneously. After the cross, even the followers of Jesus were, they forgot the promises he gave and they were distraught and they felt like he'd lost. So it wasn't like once he was crucified then everyone saw, least of all these people who were his opponents. But the promise still is that when you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know. And so the fulfilling of that promise clearly wasn't instantaneous. It, it clearly wasn't like what we would like sometimes, what I would like sometimes. You know, God, why don't you just shake this world up? That's not the way it works. Coming to know was not like a lightning bolt in the middle of the night. Boom! Now we know. That'll wake you up, scare the wits out of you, but it's the goodness of God that leads to repentance. The promise of then you'll know is, is, is more like the dawning of a, of a day, an everlasting day. Very subtle at first. Seems very slow, but it lasts forever, so don't worry about it. It's something that gets brighter and brighter, like the river picture, so with the light. It gets brighter and more expansive and fuller and goes farther. And it's the dawning of an eternal day, an everlasting day. And of course, the light is love, once again. It's why in the heavenly realm, the new heavens and new earth, there, there, is no, there is no need for the sun because the light of God's love is there and it never sets. But it's the picture of the light of love, an everlasting day. It grows, it expands, it cannot be stopped. It's inexhaustible. It's our hope. Now, when it comes to the dawning of the day, or, or really just even this day of the Lord, the, the light of the world and how it works, you look back through history, your, your personal history or the history of, of any group of people, and, and we go through dark nights. We, I went through one last night. It was dark. We go through dark nights. We go through dark seasons. We even go through dark ages. But, but where there's dark ages in one place, Oftentimes there's more light somewhere else. You can find that geographically around the planet, but you can find that in history as well. And wherever it's dark, don't worry, it, it can't last forever. The darkness cannot overwhelm or overcome the light. The light is shining somewhere. And always for me, the goal is find where the light's shining. Look there, focus there, and follow that light. Where is there healing? Where is there caretaking? Where is there a place where, where people are learning compassion for other people? That's walking in the light. Staying in the light. Walking in the light. 
Later on, Jesus talks about staying in my word. And all of this is preliminary to that. Staying in the light. It, it means simply, first of all, like the picture of the, the woman caught in, in adultery, staying in the light means quit judging, quit condemning, quit throwing stones, because the people that do that, they, they walk away. They walk out into the darkness because they're already in the darkness. That's the picture. Staying in the light means staying with the one that loves the most and, and, and stay with the one who needs love the most, like that woman that Jesus stayed with. Stay in the light. Don't throw stones. Keep forgiving. God, help me. Help me to just let it go and, and help me to trust you. Stay in the light. Walk in the light. Walking in the light means, okay, you know, don't focus on the dark stuff. It's there, okay? Look for the light. Look for the, for the healing. Look to be a healer. Stay, stay hopeful. Keep healing. Because the picture is that one day even the worst enemies, when they've done their worst, someday, somehow, Jesus promises, don't ask me to explain it, but Jesus promises when you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am. Somehow, the power of love, I believe, love has its victory. And again, referring to his manner of death. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men to myself. That's it. Talk about being hopeful, or at least having good reason to be hopeful. We ought to be hopeful. Not condemning, just like, look, and I may be wrong right now, you may be wrong, anybody may be wrong. If, if you find out you're wrong, then move, do something different. But be hopeful. Walk in the light. We should pray for this world. We shouldn't worry for this world. This world doesn't need our worry. It doesn't really help anyway. Because it has God's love. God loves the world. God is doing a great work in the world. All the time. Don't just look at what you like to see happen and it's not happening or the things that are changing or or darkness in a given region or a certain time or a, a place and, oh, you know, what's this world coming to? It's, uh, it's going to hell in a handbasket. No, no. It's going to God in an ambulance. And Jesus is the, the one. He's the healer. He's the great physician. We ought to be hopeful. It's the only way we can really be helpful is if we're hopeful. And so the light of the world says just keep walking in the light. And the best medicine for my own sickness, and i got plenty of it, the best medicine for my sickness is to have some compassion for somebody else that's sick, somebody else that's suffering. Find a way to, you know, how can I help? So it says in verse 30, as he spoke these things, many came to believe in him. Something happened right then. They, something lit up inside of them. They heard his words. They said, aha! <laughs> Those aha moments for the, um, for the heart, for the soul. And, and maybe as you hear these things, if I'm sharing with you what I see here, if you're seeing the same thing I am, you, you, you might be having one of those aha moments. Like, whoa, hey, I was really bummed out earlier, and now I, I'm hearing this, and it's like, whew, I feel better. And quite frankly, I have had a lot of aha moments. Not, not just, you know, something, you know, enough praise choruses, and, and suddenly you get in that groove. I mean, there, there's all kinds of... <laughs> There's all kinds of uh, rhythms and beats and music and things. That, it's part of our body. You, can, you, you get worked up. All that's that's a, a different psychological thing. Now, I'm not saying that's always bad. You know, a lot of what we talk about as uh, spiritual experiences has a lot more to do with our body and music and rhythm and, and the way we're wired. But I, I digress. I tend to do that. When I talk about a euphoric thing, for me it's often in my heart and in my mind and it's because I'm thinking about the things Jesus said and it all seems to be coming together and it all seems to be connecting and it's clicking and I'm hopeful and I'm feeling good and I'm thinking, I, that's great. I feel good because I believe in Jesus and I believe that Jesus is going to win and I'm going to stop worrying and, and I, I, I believe in him. And, and aha! Now it all makes sense. I'm driving along and it's like, oh, it all makes sense. Almost that feeling that some people describe with their near-death experience where they just suddenly realize, why did I worry all my life? God's great. God's big. 
God's got a plan. <laughs> Sometimes I feel that, but you know, whenever I, I, I feel that, aha, at some point I know it's going to fade. It always does. You know, I want to hold on to it, but it's not like a dream that I can't hold on to. It's just that it's a life that I can't, I can't live in it. I can't stay it. I, 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 I can't. Don't berate yourself if you can't hold on to those believing, euphoric, aha. If you can't hold on to them, you're human, okay? It's just don't, don't blame yourself. Don't berate yourself. It's part of being on planet Earth. Again, it's like the picture of the sun in the sky. And the, the planet moves. And, and so when you get them, when you feel like, aha, I'm so hopeful. I have so much light has come into my heart. I feel so much more light. Just understand it, it'll fade at some point. Don't worry about that. Just take it into account and plot your course accordingly. Just realize that, okay, when last I saw the light, that's where it was, and, and it'll come back again. But that's what all mariners do. That's what all travelers do. You take your sextant, you look at the points of light, you look at where the sun was. You, you, you realize that uh, not they are moving so much as we are moving. And as we move, then it's, 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 it's going to fade. It's going to change. And, and you know, it's, it's just part of being on the earth. It's, again, like the sun, the sun doesn't change the, the, that light of the world, so to speak. In a physical sense, the light of the world, the sun, is just there. It doesn't fade into the west. We just keep moving <laughs> into the east. And, okay. But it'll, it will come back around. And, and that's the idea. And, and one day, we'll, we'll rise above it all. One day, it'll be light all the time. One day, aha, will never, will never end. Um, but we're not there yet. So, for these people who believed, it says, verse 31, Jesus therefore was saying to those Jews who had believed in him, if you abide in my word, then you are truly disciples of mine, and you shall know the truth, and the true truth shall make you free. That's as, as I've been looking at that today, there is so much there. And we'll, we'll look at what I have time to talk about right now. But, but, you know, it's not like stuff yourself. That's not the best way to eat. I mean, Thanksgiving aside, just stuffing yourself and then take a little bit, walk, work it out, go a little further, take a little bit more in. That's, that's what I'd like to do with this great truth, because you, you hear it all the time. The truth will set you free. The truth will set you free. And of course it will. And, and, and even the context for these words right now, if, if, if you are like with me so far and it's like, hey, I get this. I'm more hopeful hearing this. God will win. The love of God is a tremendous healing power. I'm going to continue to, to walk in that light, walk in that love, walk in that healing. If, if, if you believe in Jesus, Bear in mind that these words are specifically for you. It, it says that many came to believe in him, and Jesus therefore was saying to those Jews who had believed in him. And particularly, specifically, he was talking to those Jews who had believed in him. And, and there's a lot to learn about that in the rest of this chapter. Because by the end of the chapter, they're ready to throw stones at him. Because they're... they're their Judaism, their Jewishness was, was more meaningful than, than their belief in Jesus, at, at least at that point. And so he's, he's saying to them who are just kind of like, hey, I get it, I, I see the light, I believe in you. He's saying, you know, it's not the, the uh, momentary, aha, I've got it. It's, it's, it's where do you go with it from here? He, he says again, where does he say it? Oh, <laughs> He's, he says to those who have believed in him, if you abide in my word, then you are truly disciples of mine. And that, that very word, truly disciples, clearly implies that there are people who, who think that they're disciples. Or maybe they want others to think that they're disciples. But, but there are some who are deceived, some who are deceivers, some who are kidding themselves, some who are trying to kid others. But Jesus is always straight with us. He, he says, do you want to know if it's genuine? Are you a disciple? Oh, listener out there. If I'm looking in the mirror right now, am I a disciple? How do you know? Do you have a, a disciple diploma? Do you have a, a 
a baptismal certificate or something that says you're a disciple? Are you a, a card-carrying disciple? Do you go to a Disciples of Christ? How, how do you know if you're a disciple? And of course, the teaching here makes it clear, it's ultimately not what you say. I am a disciple. I believe. It's ultimately not what you say. It's ultimately not which box you check. You're going into the hospital. What are you? I'm a Christian. I'm a disciple. I'm... It's not what you say. It's not what you say about yourself. It's a little bit more what others say about you. But again, it's, it's primarily how are you living? Because the condition is staying in my word. Those who walk in the light, Jesus said earlier, they're, they're not going to walk in darkness. Walking in the light, staying in the word, they're, they're the same. It's, it's how you're living at any given moment. You know, we're, we're so focused on this, do you go to heaven when you die sort of thing, that we, we miss out on heaven right here and now. These are, these are not questions, you know, are you a disciple? This is not a question that comes from St. Peter when you get to the pearly gates. This is a question to ask yourself on any given day, because it has a whole lot to do with how well you will be. Do you wish to get well? Do you want to be a disciple? Do you want to be a, a healer? Do you want to be hopeful? Do you want to walk or just lay there? Do you want to move forward? Do you want to grow up? Do you want to be a disciple? These are everyday questions, every decision type questions. It's about the habits of our life, the thing that we do. Am I a disciple? That's, that, that shouldn't be a fearful question. Am I a disciple? It should be a careful question. Am I careful? Who do I care for? What do I care about? And of course, Jesus gave the guidelines for, for who we should care for and what we should care about. And he lays it out, of course, here. He says, if you abide in my word, then you are truly disciples. Abide, stay. It's not, it's not staying in a particular church or staying in a denomination or staying in a tradition. or It's staying in his word. And it's not just reading the Bible all the time as some people seem to think because this was spoken to a lot of people who couldn't read and for so long people didn't read. And it's, not, it's not about I'm reading the Bible, I'm in the word. It's about are the words of Jesus in you and, and it has to do with how you think and how you live and how you, you walk and, and really the best picture for me, the best analogy to, about staying in the word is kind of like what I mean when I say to someone, stay in your lane. Now, now stay in your lane is not to tell you to just stop everything. It's, it's, you know, it's stop being rude and stop transgressing and stop trespassing and stop smashing into others and stop being a nuisance, all of that. But when I say stay in your lane, when someone says stay in your lane, it doesn't just mean, oh my gosh, I did something wrong. I know what to do. I'll do something right. I'll just stop. I'll just stop right here in the lane and I'll set up a tent and I'll camp and I'll watch the lines on either side. I'll never go off a cliff that way. I'll never, I'll never transgress. I'll never trespass. I'll never do bad because I'm staying in my lane. Okay? You get the analogy. If we say stay in your lane, we mean keep moving, keep going, go, please, go, keep moving. You're free. Stay free. Be free. That's what we call them freeways, not crashways. If everyone stays in their lane and, and goes with the guidelines, it's not a crashway. It's a freeway. Be free. Stay free. Run free. Just follow the guidelines. Follow the, the rules. And then, of course, in this case, it's the rules of the road. And those change in different places at different times. But, but that's the idea. Now, our guidelines, if we want to be disciples of Jesus, it's not the words of anyone else, any, any church or any group or any commentator. It's the words of Jesus. And the guidelines that he gives us aren't local. They're not temporary. They're not tied to space and time because they're spiritual. They have everything to do with love. And his guidelines, therefore, are, are universal. They always apply. If you're going to set your moral compass to something, the, the word of Jesus 
the laws of love. They're, they're, they're universal. When it comes to the things of this world, the things that we get so worked up about, the things that get so much of our attention, they're, they're, they're like the rules of this place. And wherever you happen to be driving, then there's different guidelines. If you're in the U.S., then you drive on the right side. Stay to the right. If you go to the U.K., then you better stay to the left. And, and so it is with so many rules. If you live in this country, this is the Constitution. If you're living in that territory or that province, this is the, the rules and the Constitution. And, the, and the, that's the way it is over there. And all of those things, they, they change throughout the course of time. They change in, in times of trouble. Right now we're in the middle of a pandemic and certain things you were free to do, they're saying, please don't do. And, and the people that are all up in arms and freedom, freedom. The laws of love and compassion and consideration, they always apply. And yeah, if, if you just hate doing it, you're just going to hate it. But if you do whatever you do out of love, then you find even, even confining things, difficult things, hard things, can become labors of love. I'm not just doing it because Trump or Newsom or someone else said so. I'm doing it because it's, I believe it's the loving and kind thing to do. And you're free. And, and all the guidelines of this world, they, they, they change with time. And if we live long enough, we see them changing, changing, changing. And if you're just passing through in this world, which, by the way, you know, we're, we're just passing through. Wherever your citizenship happens to be, we're just passing through. But wherever you're passing through, on the road, in the streets, in the marketplace, in this country, in that country, whatever streets you happen to be driving on, if you follow the guidelines, you respect the rules of that particular place. Why? Because it's respecting the people. It's, it's saying, look, you're important. And maybe I don't want to live this way, but this is where I'm living right now. Maybe I don't want to drive this way, but this is the road I'm driving on right now. And so, again, the, the things that Jesus teaches us, are they, they set us free from these other things that are always changing. Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Not a big deal. And if you do it in love, it can actually be a blessing like anything done in love. The, the guidelines that, that Jesus gives us, the guidelines are God's lines. They're the lines of love. They're good lines. Fight the good fight. May not be what you want, but they're the lines of, of love. And if you're wondering what they are, you can find all kinds of things in the Bible. And the Bible is a progression. And it starts off like a trickle and it grows to a flood and it comes to its fullness in the person of Jesus. You know that. To me, and I don't know how many would argue with me on this, but to me the most condensed portion, if I only have so much time and certainly only so much space in my brain, to, to, to hold on to a condensed teaching of Jesus, not, not just the stories about Jesus. They're wonderful. Not, not just the stories about how people reacted to Jesus. They are, they are very instructive. I love all four of the Gospels in a rich way. But the most condensed portion, if I'm just looking at living in the light, it's the Sermon on the Mount. It's, the, it's three chapters, five, six, seven, in the Gospel according to Matthew. I'm convinced that if you learn those and live those, the more you learn, the better you'll live. The better you live, the more you'll learn. The more you learn, the better you live, the better you live. Truly live. The more you'll learn, the truth will set you free. And that's a, that's, I think that's an eternal loop. It gets bigger and better and brighter and we can start now. And that's what Jesus said. He said, if you abide in my word, then you are truly disciples of mine. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Knowing the truth is not just a, a aha moment. It's, it's progressively learning. And then you look back and you say, boy, how immature I was. Well, of course. We all start out immature. 
but growing up, growing in love, perfecting love, casting out all fear, loving God, learning of God. If, you, if you're free, the truth shall set you free. If you're really free, you don't have to wave a banner and prove anything. If you're free, folks, enjoy it. Because a lot of people are in bondage to a lot of things. And I, I, it's a sad thing. I wish I could help them. Some people love their bondage. The only security they know is the prison walls around them because they think those are the things that keep them safe. But you know what? Jesus couldn't talk to them. Or he could talk to them. But let him who has ears, let, let them hear. You don't have to argue. Just look, love wins, light wins. Pray for them, love them. Jesus certainly did. But if you're free today, enjoy it. Don't get frustrated about all the people who are all tied up in knots about whatever. It, I love to be free. There, there have been times when I have, it is, you know, I may have just gone through some real heavy troubles, but I, I did it the right way. I walked in love. And I just come away and just, oh, I feel free. I don't care who knows or sees. I don't have to prove it. I don't. I just feel. I just. I remember driving down the road. Doom, 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 I feel free. <laughs> yeah. Um, good feelings. Good times after after big battles sometimes. But but you do the right thing. You do the loving thing. Ah, I feel free. Free is good. I like free. You don't have to. You don't have to prove it. Here in this world, you know, the, the fact is we have to fight for a lot of things. That's just the way it is in this world. You gotta scramble, you gotta, you know, it's just, it's just, you gotta fight for a lot of things in this world. And you gotta fight for a lot of freedoms. You have to fight for earthly freedoms. You have to fight for financial freedoms, perhaps, and religious freedoms, and, and political freedoms, and, and physical freedoms. Freedom from poverty, and, and, and if you, if you get sick or if you, if you get injured, you, you have to fight just to be able to stand again, just to be able to walk again. And all of those can be good fights if you fight in a good way. But never outside, never outside of the ways and words of Jesus. Because outside of that is a, is a darkness. And those who are in the darkness, they don't know. And you may do it in the name of the light and you may wave your banner and say in Jesus' name, but that's not true. And you're just walking in more bondage. And you won't be happy in the end and you won't be helping anyone in the end. So, so yes, it, there are things to fight for, but, but just remember they're the things of this earth, they're the things of this world. Keep it in context. However you fight, whatever you fight for, fight the good fight in a good way. Don't be overcome by evil. Overcome evil with good. And, and understand all the while, understand this fact that the things that matter most, the things that really make you free in here, and no one can take that freedom away. Even if you did end up in a, in a prison or unjustly set off in some jail cell or concentration camp, horrible things have happened. They've happened to believers. But even then, there's the freedom of knowing that this darkness cannot endure. The light will win. Love will win. The freedom of knowing that, that not you fought for it, Jesus fought for something for you. And he won. You may not feel it now, you may not see it now, you may be in a place like he was. My God, why have you forsaken me? But you're not alone. And you don't have to fight for that. He fought for it. Now, knowing that, I hope you can hear it. Really know it. Really believe in it. And stay in that light. Stay in that love. Walk in that way. The guidelines of, the universal guidelines, the, the lines of love, God's lines, the guidelines that he's given, the Sermon on the Mount, the things he says, they don't change. But here on this earth, that light and the ways, the rivers that flow forth from it, there is change. It gets better. I believe that. I, I, I believe that I can see that throughout history, from the cross onward. And his, his principles, 
the true core principles, regardless of all the religious Christendom changes that have happened, the core principles are always the same, even if they're utterly ignored at times by those who are most religious. The, the guidelines, the, the things to set your moral compass to, they, they never change. The, the highway broadens, more lanes, gets bigger, gets better. It's, it's the way love works. The river gets wider. Don't worry if it seems to overflow the, the boundaries and the, and the barriers that you think. Ah, this shouldn't happen. Back in my day, back in my... Oh, that wouldn't have been... Well, may, maybe love has overflowed its banks. May, maybe, maybe it's not just to the Jews anymore. Maybe it's gone to the Samaritans. Be open to that, huh? Maybe it's not just for the men. Maybe it's for the women just as much. Maybe God is spirit, and in him there is neither male nor female, slave or free, in terms of financial. It's not about class. It's not about barbarian or Scythian or nationality. Or, uh, love wins. And sometimes that scares religious people. It sure did scare these people. But don't, don't worry for the world. Pray for the world. Be a part of the healing. Be a helper. But God is, God so loved the world, he gave his son. And if you find in your lifetime, as I think all of us find, if you find that your beloved painted lines on the road, if you find that your beloved painted lines are being painted over by the next generation, and of course they're your kids or your grandkids and they're a bunch of idiots, they don't know. You know, we don't have to just grow old. We can grow up and realize that, okay, maybe my lines were good for when I was, maybe it was great for the Model A or something, but, but my lines are being painted over by others, and, and maybe they're wrong, and maybe it'll lead to a crash. We've had a few of those, haven't we? But you know what? Lighten up. Walk in the light. If your beloved lines are being painted over by somebody else, just that's, those are just the guidelines of this earth, if your beloved constitution, the constitution of your corporation, your religious denomination, your nation, wherever you happen to be living, and there are folks, no doubt, tuned into this who are living somewhere else. Yeah, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, wherever you are, drive on the right side of the road, even if it's the left side. <laughs> but if you find that the lines are being painted over by somebody else, as long as it's somebody else who's in authority to do that, then, okay, gotta, gotta learn, the old dog's gotta learn a few tricks perhaps, but, but the old truth, the Sermon on the Mount stays the same. And the Constitution, the, the written thing, even the written word is not, it's not the way that we often, you look at all the different denominations and all the ways they read this same book and the, and the lines that they lie down in. And if I go to one of their churches, then I'll respect that because I respect those people and they have the right to, Say, don't chew gum in church. Okay, I won't. <laughs> Respect the people. Don't say dumb rules. But, but the rules that really count, the ones to live by, the ones to abide in, if you're really a disciple, you, you stay in these, they never change. It starts with, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, the gentle. For they're going to win. They're going to inherit the earth. And blessed are those who hunger and thirst for what's right, truly right. They'll be satisfied. They won't have to, even if the Supreme Court turns them down. If you really want what's right, they will be satisfied. And blessed are the merciful, for they will obtain mercy. And blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And blessed are the peacemakers. If there's a purity in here, you know, the, the, over, the, the, the wars within us is an overflow of the, the wars within us. The wars between us. It, the wars in our relationships. It flows out of the war inside. If you, can be, if you can have the purity of heart to see God, how he loves you. The pure in heart will see God and then not just experience peace, but be a peacemaker. For they shall be called the sons of God regardless of what box you check. The peacemakers are the sons of God. And if you get persecuted because you live all of that sort of stuff, even then, doesn't mean you lost, didn't, doesn't mean it didn't work. It's just 
typical. If you live like that, then you may find that people want to take away some of your rights. They want to persecute you. But again, yours is the kingdom of heaven. It happens right here. That's how it starts. Bunch of amazing things in between. You know, it's all way over my head, by the way. Just like the whole universe is way over my head. That, that doesn't frighten me. Say, boy, there's a lot to learn, a lot to grow, a lot to explore. <laughs> but stay in that. Stay in that truth. The attitudes. That's where it begins, the Beatitudes. And then it ends with, if you build on that, if you build on those truths, whatever you work on all your life, you're building things, building things, working on things, trying so hard, getting so frustrated. When the storms come, and they will, they, they come for everybody. When the floods, the winds, the storms come, the promise is that if you've been building on what Jesus said, what you've been working on won't get washed away. No one can take it away. That's the good news. Are you a disciple? Do you wish to get well? I sure do. Heavenly Father, help us. You, you clearly love us. Help us to see how much you love us. Help us to learn love and, and learn to love. Help us to experience real freedom. And help us, Lord, when we do have to fight, to make sure it's the good fight that we fight, and we do it in a good way. Lord Jesus, you love us so very much. And I pray that we would walk in that love, walk in that light. Whatever we're going through right now, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, whatever we're passing through right now, it will pass. And it's going to get better. And it's going to get brighter. And it'll be forever. 